Hello, Roger Bisbee. <laughs> That's me, yeah. <laughs> it's Roger Bisbee. Hello, this is Roger Bisbee. <laughs> and today I'm gonna to be power flashing this central heating system. This is a big old house. It's got a lot of old radiators on it, a lot of new radiators on it. And I reckon there's gonna be a bit of sludge in there. So I've got my power flusher outside and I've connected it up inside. I'm not going to flush through the boiler because I reckon the boiler's all right. It's pretty new. And when you start power flushing through the boiler, you very often find that you push more gummings and gunk up into it than you get out. So I'll just begin with the system and see what we get out of there. So this is from the power flush. It's going into the flow. Just made a small connection there. That's 22 mil into the flow. And here on the return, we've got the power flush hose going back to the unit. Now all it is, is a very powerful pump. You can change it backwards and forwards, which is great because you can just kind of agitate the stuff, run it one way, then quickly turn it and it will run the other way. The only problem with doing that, I've done that before and found that it's so powerful that it blasts the ball off of the motorized valve. So you need to be careful about that because if you start running water the wrong way through the motorized valve, it is possible that that little rubber ball that's inside will drop off and then it'll just be lodged in there. And you won't know why your heating isn't working. So this is the power flush unit. I've had it many years, it's done a lot of work. And you may wonder why I'm even telling you about how to power flush. Well, the reason is that you can go and hire one of these yourself and do your own power flushing. And when you look at the prices people are charging for power flushing, anywhere between six, 800 quid for a, a fairly modest house, say three or four bedroom house, then you can understand that if you can go and hire this baby for 100 quid, you save yourself a lot of money and probably do a better job because you've got more time. Now, one more thing. This is an addition to the power flush. So when it returns from the heating system through this hose here, it's going to go through this magnetic filter. Just a big tube, if you like. All it's got is a whacking great powerful magnet in there. And the idea is that the water will run around there and it will fish out all the magnetite. The magnetite is basically the, the rust from the, it's black rust as opposed to orange rust or should be, um, from the radiators in the system as they corrode over the years. You get that bit of rust building up. That's what causes the black sludge in central heating systems. That's the stuff that sits on the bottom of the radiators and impedes the flow. So if we can get rid of that, We've got nice clean water going through there. We can then put some additive in there, some anti-corrosion additive in the system, and it'll be as good as new, we hope. Now, I would just say one thing. It is possible if you've got a very old system and you power flush it, that it will open up a leak in one of the radiators. That can't be avoided. I always tell customers that that won't be my responsibility. It's just that the radiator was getting near the end of its life and what you've done is exposed the weakness. It was going to happen sometime anyway, but it doesn't happen that often, quite honestly, but you must prepare them for that. So this is the flow going out to the central heating system. And this is the return coming back via the magnetic filter. We've got a couple of levers on here. We can turn it on and off from there. And we've got an inlet here for the cold water coming in. And this one we can also turn off. Over here, we can change the flow backwards and forwards. You can swing it backwards and forwards, but as I say, be careful of doing that because of the motorized valves. So this is the dump. This is where we get rid of all the dirty old water. So all we do is swing that lever around there and then it'll empty this whole vessel. But we'll leave it running for a while. Let it go around a few times. Because this is a low velocity point, the rubbish does tend to collect in here. If you want to put any kind of cleaner in there to clean the system out, you can just put it into there. As you can see by the color on it, that it's um, had a lot of rusty old water going through it over the years. So what I'm doing now is I'm filling it up with water from the garden hose. And once that's full up, the pump will start working and that will push the water into the system. And it's going to push it all the way to the top of the house, which is quite a long way. So the reason I put these pumps outside rather than down near the boiler is because if you're not watching, you get a bit of overflow coming out on them. And um, you don't want that to be flooding indoors while you're away. So when I put it outdoors, I don't care if it overflows a little bit. It's not a, bit a real issue. But indoors, I have had a couple of situations where the whole thing started flooding over on me. 
starting to come back now you can see it pushing its way back I'm just going to loosen that slightly let the air get out it's all right let it, let it run I have to go around and bleed a few radiators now so I've given it a couple of hours that's uh, all I've got time to do today and to be honest it didn't produce anything like the dirty water that I normally get in that power flush which makes me think that maybe it's already had a power flush but nobody recorded it nobody left a, a note on the boiler to say that that's what had been done but when you're doing a lot of jobs like boiler changes and so on you have to do a power flush in order for the warranty to be valid so in that case there was nothing else I could do because if they come along and they find a dirty system that's the warranty null and void so let's have a look and see what we actually managed to get out on this magnet hmm not great but you can see all those black bands there every one of those is a bit of magnetite let me just take a cloth and you can see interestingly the ones at the bottom that's where all the bits of metal are. All those would have ended up in the pump or the valves or something else. So it has done a job. It's just that maybe it needed a few more hours in there, but you can see this, everything here is foreign matter, if you like. You shouldn't have it in the, in the heating system. So normally when I do this, the thing is absolutely caked in it which is why I think that somebody's been here before me stolen my thunder but never mind I still think it was worth doing you can hire these we'll put some details on the screen where you can get hold of them and it really is just a question of connecting it up and away you go